Welcome back, Akron fans, to another tournament match. This is going to be Cybernetic Point vs. Shock. We're on round two of the Akron 2013 Christmas tournament. And we saw some really good showings from Electro, Monkey God, and Hike. Why does this keep doing this? <sighs> anyway, we saw some really good showings from Electro, Monkey God, and Haiku. So, Cybernetic Point vs. Shaka. Actually, saw a lot of rush games from those four. Cybernetic Point vs. Shaka might be more interesting, though, because we are starting out on Tomb of Heroes, which is a much larger map than the ones we've seen so far. I think it's the largest map in the tournament. And it does support proxies and rushes okay, but nowhere near as well as Rooftop Showdown, Overgrown Citadel, or Snowblind would. So, let's begin and see how that turns out. Cybernetic Pony starting out in the west side of the map, playing as CISO, and Shaka starting on the east side of the map. He is playing random, so we'll figure out what the game has picked for him. Shaka has... Oh, what is he... Come on. You know what you're picking. Shaka has been appointed to play CISO in this match. Or in this game, rather. So, CISO mirror on Tomb of Heroes. This may take a while. Fair warning right now, you may want to go and get some water. I may have wanted to go and gotten some water because I'm the one speaking to you at fairly regular pace and not too quietly, so I might want some water, actually. Anyway, that aside, sit down, strap in, and this will probably last a little while, so keep watching. Anyway, Cybernetic Pony going for a fairly typical opening scout, and Shaka is... Getting a very quick second importer, in fact. So that's, that's a little unusual. Shalka is going very far north. Looks like he's planning on doing a proxy expand to the north. Which, not entirely unusual. And that's exactly what he's doing. I have seen this before, and it's not unusual. It's a little bit difficult to defend, especially since the main base is open. Usually when I see this, the main base gets attacked. The next thing that the, your opposing player does is just attack. And 790 Pony is probably going to do that. He is getting a quick factory. He is getting six LCRPs into a quick factory. Probably going to get early ATHCs from there. Just a couple of early ATHCs. And once he sees that Shalka's main base is open, I imagine he's probably just going to strike it. Try to get rid of the importers and at least slow down this proxy. A, a third importer has been built over in the north. As well as an armory with a few more special ops. And another armory right next to Shalka. Sorry, right next to 790 Pony's base. Shalka is really committed to this proxy strategy. But, like I said, Cybernetic Pony knows what's happening now. He sees no infantry in the base, he sees nothing going up here, and that is going to get rid of the importers. I doubt Cybernetic Pony is going to change this up at all, unless he notices any compelling reason to. Like, if Shalka were to move back into his base or just completely undo this proxy, he might trigger Cybernetic Pony going back and undoing this attack. But, frankly, Cybernetic Pony is doing the right thing right now. However, he has to worry about the fact that there is a proxy coming in. He does have a Lancer set up. That Lancer is going straight for, si for Shalka's base, not going to the north, not going to the south. He doesn't know exactly know where the proxy is. He has no reason to believe that's necessarily the north, but it usually is. This path is pretty common for proxies. This sort of bridge-type structure here. So it's the most likely place to look. And given the attacking forces from Shalka are coming from the north, that's where it's very likely to be. And a mech being built up, probably a quick macrofab from here. However, Shalka is able to get rid of some of the Q-Plasma RPs, and this is one of the big reasons why the northern attack direction is so powerful, because the Q-Plasma crates are at the north. The north side of the main base, so you can just come in, and it's fairly easy to attack them without too much defenses. From the south, however, you have to get through a lot of defenses in order to get to the Liquid Crystal crates, which is generally better protected. And the north also has a fairly lucrative expansion set, it's just that because of that, the north has the easily predicted place they're going to attack from. I mean, you can always just snake around the side of the base and then attack from the north side while proxying over to the south. That's perfectly plausible. However, that is not what's happening. Shalka is definitely proxying to the north, and Cybernetic Pony has not yet found the proxy. He has seen quite a bit of the infantry coming in, but he has not found the actual proxy attack, which is a little bit surprising. In fact... I think that Cybernetic Pony is just not focused at this point in time. But Shalka, by the way, is about three minutes down from Cybernetic Pony. And it looks like he has, in fact, undone the proxy entirely. So this will trigger Cybernetic Pony changing up a strategy a fair bit. And Shalka definitely going for a much more typical style of game. Realizing that the proxy is not going to do him any good. Although, admittedly, Luzi, he did have no importers left, but he had a lot of attack force coming in. I'm actually slightly surprised he didn't just keep going with the proxy and try to 
Milka for all it was worth, but apparently, no, he is going for the safer, more economical strategy, focusing on his main base, getting a couple AT or getting an ATHC up to get rid of the infantry coming in, and then Cyberdyne Pony will have to deal with that a bit more economically. Be a bit more of a macro game, and this is where it's probably going to be a bit of a long-haul game. Now, the ATHC actually won't be able to get rid of both of the infantry coming in on its own. In fact, only able to get rid of one, only able to get rid of the special ops. The Marine will need to be dealt with, and it looks like that's going to be the job of the infantry in Shalka's base. One of the Marines is going to the south, probably to expand. The other Marine and special ops staying in the main base, and right now Shalka has a slightly weaker economy than Cybernetic Pony. 4 LC, 1 QP versus 5 LC, or 6, 6 LC. And both players have a factory. Cybernetic Pony has an armory. Shalka, that early proxy, looks like it probably did take a bit of a toll on his economy. He does now have a 6th RP, but Cybernetic Pony, well aware of this, has scouted to the south and intercepted it. Although it looks like Shalka probably predicted that as well and is avoiding that. He's, his Marine is avoiding this attack and will not have to deal with that ultimately from the looks of it. I think Cybernetic Pony may have cancelled that. Hard to say though, Cybernetic Pony further in the future, so right now, hard to tell until the red time comes in whether or not Cybernetic Pony has committed to this interception. It does, however, slow down Shalka's expansion attempts, or even just econ economy construction attempts. That is going to slow things down. At this point, Cybernetic Pony is steadily getting ahead. As we can see, he has still 6 RPs. Further in the future, he is definitely macroing in the present, doing the right thing on that part. Getting machinery at the three, well, at the six minute mark, getting machinery, jumping back to the three minute mark just to deal with what's going on down in the south. Getting his Lancer over here to try to deal with some stuff. And ATHC coming from the south for Shalka, actually. Shalka looks like he is planning on going for a bit of a sneaky attack with the ATHC, but it's very hard to tell. Right now, he looks more just going for a committed ATHC assault. On Tomb of Heroes, though, at this stage in the game, that's going to be hard to pull off more than just maybe a mild harassment. Especially given that Cybernetic Pony is well aware of what's going on. And especially, especially seeing as Cybernetic Pony is clearly pushing for just getting more troops and more economy. At this point, he just needs to defend the HHCs, and he's going to have the present that he expects to have. And you see in the present, like I said, he has machinery, he has his factory, he has four QPRPs, six LCRPs in his main base. Nothing further around, though. But anyway, back to where the players are actually focused. Cybernetic Pony at the four-minute mark, getting rid of this expansion to the south, or trying to, with the Lancer going down. And the other infantry forces will be trying to intercept that as well, but the special ops will heal everything up and cause that to have been a complete waste of time, unfortunately, for that Lancer. Now, on the other hand, Shalka, further in the future, a minute up from there, is clearly going for the assault. There is the assault, the 4 ATHC assault. Bit of a slightly older strategy. It's one that was a bit more popular about 1520 or 1530, so about two months ago. It hasn't really had strong of a showing since then. Though, in Caesar versus Caesar, it could have a chance. It's just... It was kind of found that it got torn apart too quickly by Octopods and I think by Zion Pulsers. So it fell out of favor. However, in the context of CISO versus CISO, especially given that Cybernetic Pony is more economy focused, there may be a small window. I doubt it. I mean, he's going from the north, so he's going to be able to take care of some of the some of the crates here or some of the RPs here. But there's so much infantry around defending against this that I think that the HHC is just going to die. That is also going to go down. Cybernetic Pony, however, does have to deal with the fact that Shalka is... He is moving around. He is getting hidden RPs. Granted, he is still expanding slower. His economy is falling behind quite a lot, actually. In fact, Cybernetic Pony at this point has about twice as many RPs as Shalka. Now, a lot of those are focused on Q-Plasma, mind you. But Cybernetic Pony may just be going for a really quick high, high air or possibly chronoporting strategy. Which would require a lot of Q-Plasma. And for which this would work quite well. So at this point... Cybernetic Pony has a major economic advantage. He has a major military advantage. Just He has enough defensive forces to deal with the ATHCs coming in. He's going to be getting rid of the comm up to the northwest, so signaling he's going to expand to this north expansion. And at the same time, center of the map, the ATHCs have been spotted out. Cybernetic Pony's ATHC is spotting out Shalka's, while Shalka's Lancer comes in from the south, but that won't last too long. Between the mech and the special ops, that's going to just get rid of it. The mech alone, really. And... Shalka, like I said, he's falling behind. He's getting a few more RPs here and there. He is definitely starting to build up again. He has actually quite a few, quite a lot of resources in the bank. What? About 200 or so liquid crystal. That's enough for, two, well, three RPs by the time the first two are built. He is going for more importers as well, which is a very good idea. But at the same time, he's banking a lot on factory units. It doesn't look like he has got a lot of focus in inventory. 
I mean, he does have more RPs coming in, and he's getting more Q-Plasma RPs as well. But at this point, he has five on Liquid Crystal and three on Q-Plasma spread about the map. Compared to Cybernetic Pony at this point, six and five. And Cybernetic Pony about to get rid of or still working on this Com Hub, not anywhere near about to get rid of it, but he is working on the Com Hub, which does, like I said, signal to Shalka that he's planning on going for the North Expansion. And Shalka going for that attack should point out that both that Cybernetic Pony really has no chrono energy to deal with this right now. And these ATHCs are going south to get rid of the I'll try to get rid of these RPs here. However, Cybernetic Pony moved his infantry out of the way at a really bad time, unfortunately. Moved to the south, and the agency's movement in the north looks like Shalka's mind game with the Lancer, which is clearly what he's... Must have been what he's planning on doing. Mind gaming with the Lancer, getting the infantry down to the south. Opened up the north a bit, but it looks like Cybernetic Pony able to keep the north closed off enough, but unfortunately, too many ATHCs. One does go down, but the other infantry aren't enough to deal with it. And a tank coming in. This will finish off the ATHCs, no problem. It will last long enough, and this com hub is also down at the 750 mark. There is no way that Shalka knows whether or not Cybernetic Pony is going for this North Expansion, but Cybernetic Pony, of course, is going for the North Expansion. Why else would he destroy the com hub? Now, Shalka, on the other hand, as you can see, has a lot of map control, or at least has a lot of map presence. I don't know if I would say control at this point, because I think he may have overextended himself a bit. However, these ATHCs are doing a pretty decent job harassing out Cybernetic Pony's economy, and the tank is going to be able to get rid of this. Tank and defense turrets will have no problem dealing with the ATHCs. However, the ATHCs have been able to get rid of at least a couple of these RPs. Two QPRPs are down, so now they are about even. Shalka and Cybernetic Pony are about even for Q-Plasma. In fact, I think Shalka might start to get ahead there. And Shalka getting machinery as well at the 829 mark, a little, quite a bit later than Cybernetic Pony, so I still think Cybernetic Pony has the advantage. But that wasn't a terrible harassment. Took out a couple RPs. That's 160 LC worth of RPs along with the Q-Plasma income they would have had. So that's not a bad blow. And at the same time, he did... I will point out something very important. He did expand while harassing. That's actually really important. When you're harassing like that, keeping your opponent occupied, expanding is not a bad idea. I mean, your opponent's not going to be likely to counterattack while you're attacking them. They might counterattack afterwards. You have to be worried about that. You have to make sure you have defenses dealt with and built up. Martank's coming in, mechs are coming up, this Lancer won't be a threat. The one coming in for 780 will not be, or sorry, Tornad will be a slight threat, but not a huge threat. Two mechs and the Lancer probably will be enough to deal with that. Frigates wouldn't be a bad idea, though. Yeah, Shalka is getting himself set up nicely, and 790 Pony now has a Macrofab. Definitely a slight tech advantage on Shalka's part. The early Macrofab, able to get early Martanks and possibly early Twin Mars if he goes for ground units. Now, Cybernetic Pony is definitely not as present on the map, though I'm pretty sure he could easily go around and clean up a lot of what's been built up. There's a few infantry here and there defending everything, but it's really just a matter of time before Cybernetic Pony finds what's going on and destroys it. Like, Shalka, like I said, has map presence, but not exactly map control. He's not able to defend his assets. He simply has assets strewn about the map, which will take a bit more time for Cybernetic Pony to deal with, but Cybernetic Pony can deal with it with impunity. Once he starts finding any of it, he can just kill it all. While well, Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has less presence on the map, but what he has is well defended and consolidated. And at the same time, tanks tanks coming in with the Tornads, this is going to turn things around. Shalka will have a very hard time dealing with this. The Tornad alone would have been okay, but with the tank is not a possibility. And the Martank, unfortunately, throwing itself at the mercy of the Tornad, Martanks cannot shoot at air units. I don't know if Shalka forgot this. This is a not a too recent change, but Shaka hasn't been playing all that much recently. Yes, he has clearly forgotten that Martanks cannot attack air. However, they can attack ground, and they do a pretty good job of it too. So, this tank will be quite a bit at risk from the Martanks. Just one Martank actually doing quite a bit of damage to it. The second Martank, if it got into range, would finish it off. And this is what Shaka needs, a frigate. Well, at the same time, of course, tanks coming to the south, and the infantry are being attacked from Saturday Pony to the south, as well as he tries to expand. But the northern expansion is the one he's really got to be focused on. I'm a bit surprised this marine has not been used for that. I'm going to just double check. Cybernetic Pony's timeline shows no construction in the future, so Cybernetic Pony is not expanding there at all. And this frigate from Shalka able to get rid of the Tornad. But at the same time, the tank looks like it got rid of... Looks like it got rid of the RPs. It's a bit hard to tell. 
And the Tornado, actually no, Tornado limps back, is pushed away, not killed, but definitely defense is successful for Shalka. But at the same time, Cyberdending Pony is still building up, and Cyberdending Pony still has an economic advantage. I think Shalka may have narrowed it. No, the Martian is still fairly wide on Liquid Crystal. It's just a matter at this point of getting some expansion for Cyberdending Pony, and once that happens, it's going to be tricky. And it looks like Cyberdending Pony is, like I said, still an expansion to the north. Probably what he's thinking is that he is signal that he's going to... Nope, there he goes. Never mind. He is actually now expanding to the north. Because, like I said, he did signal it, so he might as well. I mean, Shalka's expecting it. I suppose the worst that could happen is that Shalka might waste a bit of time scouting it out. But Shalka never did that. Cyber Knight Pony probably was expecting that Shalka would, and then thought, okay, maybe at this point Shalka's already scouted, assumed that Cyber Knight Pony was making a feint, and then Cyber Knight Pony would expand more safely because Shalka's not scouted it out. However, Shalka never scouted it out in the first place. Shalka, further in the future, is... Okay, Shalka, further in the future, was... What was he building up at the... Oh, darn it. Okay, let's try in the present. Shalka was further in the future, and... It's actually hard to say what he's built up. Looks like he was... Just continuing to consolidate somewhat, getting... Nothing really changed. So we'll jump back to the unplayable... Well, near the unplayable past. Shalka, the 1216 mark, is... Getting a mobile field base. He will have some healing, that's nice. Cybernetic Pony, I believe, may have been ahead on him in this case... No, he's slightly behind, in fact. Cybernetic Pony is slightly behind on the mobile field base, but he is ahead in the expansion. And Cybernetic Pony is once again taking the lead on economy. Q Plasma taking the lead. And Liquid Crystal is also still ahead. It's been ahead this entire game. Shalka has not increased his Liquid Crystal RPs. And Cybernetic Pony is, in fact, scouting out, finding more RPs. But this Lancer is going to take a lot of damage to the Marine. Not going to die, as you can see. But able to deal some damage to get rid of these resource processors. I imagine Shalka is going to try to deal with that as best he can. And with the other infantry support, yeah, this Lancer's dead. That Lancer is totally dead. And Shalka is actually getting a fair, fairly powerful ground army. In fact, getting ground units, Cybernetic Pony has beaten to the punch on that one too. And does have a Twin Mar incoming. 1330 mark, about half a minute down from where we were. The Twin Mar is still around, it is still incoming. And a mobile field base is just fixing up everything the ATHC harassment had damaged from about 10 minutes ago. Or maybe 5 minutes ago. And a second Martan coming in. A, well... A second Twin Mar will be forthcoming quite shortly. As with Tornads, and just some defense here. Not a bad idea, just to make sure Shalka, in case he tries to scout out, is stopped. But admittedly, the strongest would be attacking from air. Just attacking from this little opening by air. That would really be the way to go. However, that's not what Shalka's been doing at all this game. A separate pony is taking advantage of the fact that Shalka really hasn't focused a lot on air, focused on map control, just on... Grabbing stuff for as long as he can, but not really on consolidating it. However, Shalka does have Mars incoming. He may turn him into Twin Mars closer to Cybernetic Pony's base. And the tank as well for a bit of anti-air support. Not a whole lot, though. I think the Tornads coming in will, or the Tornads that are there and that are forthcoming, will be able to defend against this without too much issue. And of course, at the same time, the Twin Mar is still coming in. It is still bearing down, getting into Shalka's expansion, and Frigate taking care of the Tornad and Lancer, but not before most of these RPs are... Well, one of the RPs destroyed, the other RP is heavily damaged. It's been closed for the last half a minute or so. Denying Shalka quite a bit of Q-Plasma, and overall, just solidifying Cybernetic Pony's economic advantage. And there's Gate Tech. That's what I was waiting for. A little bit later than I expected, but still, that is what I was waiting for. Once that is up, Cyber 90 Pony is basically just going to be able to chronoport back, teleport back, and otherwise completely rip apart Shaka without Shaka having much to say on that subject. Now at this point, I should point out that Shaka actually still has a bit more... Let's just double check the amount of LCRPs they're actually harvesting. Four for Cyber 90 Pony and three for Shaka, so at this point, it's evened out slightly, but no, never mind. Five for Cyber 90 Pony. All right. Oh, no, one now. Actually, Cybernetic Pony's main base has been drained, which is going to give Shalka a bit of an advantage. Cybernetic Pony is probably going to try to focus on this, but he can't really. He doesn't have the chrono energy to actually deal with this. So these RPs are out. Cybernetic Pony's economic advantage is starting to lag a bit. He does have still some economy to the north, but Cybernetic Pony has fewer crates in his main base. However, at the same time, Twin Mar is coming in and able to get rid of this Macrofab. The Lance is trying to do what they can and actually doing a pretty decent job. Twinmar has a very weak anti-air attack, giving the Lancers enough time to actually deal with it pretty effectively, too, which is something. However, that Lancer is still going to die before it is able to kill the Twinmar. 
It might be enough to weaken it though. It's bought some time, and with that time, Shao Kai has not actually spent it. He is using that time instead to just as a distraction to get his own forces into Shao Kai's base. But Shao Kai's base is very heavily defended. Twin Mars would have a chance. Regular Mars do not, and a heavy tank as well to try to help out. But at this point, Cybernetic Pony has still managed to get rid of that Macrofab. Clearly, he just changed his focus to the Macrofab directly, getting rid of it, cutting his losses, and the Twin Mar is able to just tear apart all the Mar tanks coming in. And that is... That is it for Cyber Pony... Sorry, for Shalka's force. The Cybernetic Pony's defense has been highly successful. At the same time, ex moving down to the south, unfortunately losing some RPs in the process. Shalka having set up some harassment forces already in advance. And Cybernetic Pony is in a rather scary position. Now, Shalka is a bit further in the future. He is actually able to take care of those RPs quite effectively. His main base has, from his point of view, been destroyed. From Cybernetic Pony's point of view, which is a bit more true, further in the past. Main base still intact. The Macrofab is down. Now, Shalka, that being said, is not out of this game by any stretch. His economic disadvantage has been slightly mitigated by the fact that Cybernetic Pony right now has a... Well, total economic disadvantage now. He has no RPs harvesting. However, he is getting them back into the, into the harvesting game. And with his MFB here helping out, they are not going to die. Shalka is not able to get rid of them. Actually, with the tank in the way, not able to get rid of any of them. But the tank is going to take quite a bit of damage in the process. It actually will die before the MFB gets to it. The MFB will be able to continue defending, however. It is a pretty tough fighter. But it is not attacking. Cybernetic Pony is not using it to attack. He is moving it in instead to help heal up this Tornade. So Cybernetic Pony not aware that Shalka has actually managed to get rid of the defense forces and continue to get rid of the RPs. So Shalka, working entirely on harassment, is not doing a bad job. Not sure if it's paid off yet. Twinmar is incoming from the north. Now Cybernetic Pony has also been harassing as well, and actually with a lot more success, given that Shalka has not defended a lot of his assets. I mean, Cybernetic Pony has defended a lot of his, and really that's helped a ton. Now Cybernetic Pony getting Corona Porter up, and that a bit further in the future from where we are now should point out, 600 Q Plasma, 85 Liquid Crystal, that is a really good idea. With that Corona Porter, he can basically funnel that Q Plasma into effectively increasing the unit power he has. So he can send all his units back in time, have him attack when it was a bit more advantageous, or at the best time to attack. And since Q Plasma is the resource used for that, he's going to be able to use up his Q Plasma in a pretty good way. It's not going to be a waste of Q Plasma, and he admittedly does need more Liquid Crystal. And he is getting more Liquid Crystal, but the fact that he has an excess Q Plasma is perfect in this situation. He's in a really good state right now. Twinmar is incoming. It is able to get, it should be able to get rid of the factory. The Lancers won't be able to kill it in time. That factory is going down. One more of Shalka's production charges gone. No, not quite. The factory just barely survives that. Looks like the Lancers were in the way long enough. Yes, the second Lancer is going to be incoming in time. No, Shalka, did, he moved away. This is, by the way, further in the past. The factory is going to die in this iteration and ultimately... This is the end of this factory. That factory has gone down. The Lancer will be able to finish off the Twin Mar, but too little too late. Shalka losing another production structure and having nothing in the way. Now at the same time, Shalka did attack from the south, but... Not the most powerful attack, unfortunately. He's unable to get too far into the defense turrets. They are very powerful against air units. And he does have aerospace, mind you. I should point out, his Lancers are upgraded. But even with that upgrade, he still needs to have quite a few Lancers for it to be effective. It's going to be enough to get rid of the Twin Mars without too much issue, but not the defense turrets. Those defense turrets, those are a stopping block. However, they are going to do a very good job harassing, getting rid of these RPs, and Cybernetic Pony, however, does have the Corona Porter. It is up, it is charged, it hasn't been used yet, but it could very well be. And once again, that main base is taking a lot of damage. However, even with the, okay, with the healing, this has worked out. Twinmar able to, to get rid of the Lancer and the Frigate with the MFB healing. Or the MFB support in general. The fact that MFB is helping out attacking. The healing will be also useful, but the Lancer was not attacking the Twin Mar, it was attacking the MFB, which has about the same amount of health, but it's... It really doesn't matter. It was just enough units to get rid of that Lancer. Now, when this Corona Porter gets used, I don't know. I imagine it will be soon. In fact, given the lack of a factory, and the fact that most of the Lancers are gone, I think all of them may be gone, I wouldn't be surprised if... That was instead used for Temporal Assault and Shield. Although, admittedly, Specials have not been upgraded. Nope, never mind. Teleporter is being used. Actually, teleporting away these RPs. Now, Cybernetic Pony may use this opportunity to Chronoport back and deal with that. I doubt it. 
Might just chrono port in some support forces, but he can still go back and deal with it roughly chronally. If he sends back this Martank as well, that'll just get rid of those infantry, no problem. With some problems, but not a huge amount. And let's see. There we go. There, that Martank is being sent back, and like I said, some problems. In fact, quite a few problems. In fact, that was actually a bit of a waste of a Martank. Okay, some problems is a lot of problems. Well, at any rate, the RPs are being sent to not the best spot, unfortunately. Cyberly Pony is starting to lose a bit of the grip on this game. His main advantage has been the fact that Shalka has no production structures. That's the biggest thing keeping Cyberly Pony in the game right now, is the fact that Shalka has no production structures. He could rebuild them. He has an armory, he has marines, he has mechs. He can easily rebuild what he needs, but he doesn't have any at the moment, other than an armory, which isn't enough at this stage in the game, really. So, Shalka going for gate tech, surprisingly. Possibly trying to teleport a chrono board in some infantry and try to work from there. I mean, his infantry have actually been doing a pretty good job consolidating at this point. He's gone into consolidation mode now, but really he kind of has to. It's his only choice to survive. And Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, has... A few RPs here and there? He is getting some resources. Ah, here we go. There is one... Look, no, there's more RPs than one liquid crystal. There is one liquid crystal RP there. And there's others elsewhere. There has to be, because he is getting... a. He's getting more resources than one RP would suggest. I... Oh, there we go. The three RPs in the north are still fine. Just the minimap doesn't quite catch them. So, four liquid crystal RPs and... Continuing production on forces while re reconstruction of production structures for Shalka is going, and there is the infantry teleport that's likely to happen. Now, this teleporter, it's... I'm not sure where its range is, but going straight to the north to get rid of Cybernetic Pony's other expansion, which I failed to point out. Getting rid of that, getting a chrono to the north as well, and probably trying to go for a bit of an uppercut from here. Like an infantry-based uppercut, which would be fairly interesting to see if that worked out. But that appears to be the plan. Now, Shalk, on the other hand, has to deal with the fact that Cybernetic Pony has already chronoported. He has chronoported units. He doesn't have to worry about this so much. He knows it's there. He knows that it's getting attacked. He can easily chronoport units back to deal with that without it ever being a problem. In fact, he might just chronoport and teleport units to deal with this in the south, but he can do that directly, actually, with the units he has. We're pretty close, too. And he is getting specials as well, so Temporal Assault and Shield is a possible option. Is that happening? We will find out. It's fairly sudden when it does, but there we go. There's the chronoport. This Twinmar has been chronoport back, and their chronic clones are destroying Shalka's main base. Admittedly, Shalka was not relying on that base very much. He's mostly relying on the southeast. That's his main thing. But that can still be attacked. This is still the Amtelo Pass. There's still an attack going on. Now, Cybernetic Pony has enough chrono energy. This is actually, strictly speaking, the playable past, but it is still very close to the edge. Well, on the other hand... Shalka does have a teleporter in here. He is teleporting some infantry in, and he is attacking the chronoporter directly. However, there is a lot of defense forces in place. Defense stores are able to get rid of most... Actually, a lot of what's going on. Yeah, most of the stuff getting destroyed before it's able to deal any damage, really. These mechs basically doing nothing, and Shalka attacking as well from the south using... Pres no, not chronoporter. These are original infantry. He's just been spamming infantry this entire time. Teleporting them in from the south, and... Yeah, these are the infantry to attack from the south, and it looks like near the Impelable Past, Edge or into the Impelable Pass, he's checking what's going on and seeing that his sepia tone destruction is at hand. While Cybernetic Pony, on the other hand, continuing to build up Martanks and Twin Mars, getting a second Chrono Porter, probably just for extra Temporal Assault and Shield, and likely just to go for a straight attack from here. I should point out Temporal Assault and Shield gives invincibility at the cost of teleportation and chronoportation ability. It's also something that can be broken fairly easily by Lancers, Sepipods, and Shin Pulsers. Which no one ever builds. But it is counterable by Shin Pulsers. However, like I said, because it does get rid of teleportation and chronoportation on a map like this, it is a bit of a long slog to get to your opponent's base. In fact, I don't even think t that Temporal Assault and Shield is needed at this point. Giving it an MFB is a great idea, though. Because it's the healer. I mean, if it's alive and it doesn't get killed. If it's not getting attacked, it can just heal up and not have to worry about anything. Granted, it can't act as a tank in that regard, but it can still act as a healer pretty much perfectly. However, that being said, it's still not really necessary. Shalka basically has lost this match. 
A Lancer is being built up. At this point, Shalka, like I said, map presence, not map control. Very important distinction there. But it looks like Shalka has this one part of his base left, and Cybernetic Pony, aware of it, just noticing it, I should I should go where Shalka's point of view. Cybernetic Pony's forces have noticed this factory. They are going to be able to get rid of it. And I think Shalka will throw in the towel once he sees that everything else has been destroyed. This is his point of view, by the way, and he really can't do anything. At this point, he is trying to build an extra Lancer, but that will not be. That factory is down, and pretty much so go Shalka's hopes of winning this game. More forces coming in from Cybernetic Pony. He is not letting up, as he shouldn't, really. There's no reason to let up at this point. And trying to Chronoport, unfortunately, didn't quite target the right spot, but... Which is actually really annoying, because it means you lose the Chrono Energy that you used to Chrono Port, and that's all of his Chrono Energy for that purpose. Anyway. Regardless, Shalka has basically lost this game. This Lancer is the last vestige of anything he has left, and once that's gone, the game is going to be over. I mean, literally, the game is going to be over. There's actually... Well, okay, it won't be quite over, since it'd have to go to the left edge of the timeline, but... There's no way out of it. Shalko should be getting a destroy notification anytime soon, or should have gotten it back in the original game. Because at this point, that Lancer is basically dead. And this Importers are not going down, however. Cybernetic Pony is not focusing on them, but it doesn't really matter all that much. I mean, this Lancer trying to do what it can to harass, but it's not going to last very long. In fact, I'm a little... Oh, Temporal Assault and Shield on a frigate. Okay, air is Cybernetic Ponies. And there we go, Shalka getting his defeated notification. And probably going to throw in the towel at this point. There is no point continuing. He has no way out of this. And I expect... Just going to double check what went on there in the north. And then GG will follow shortly. So that, that was game one. It was a very, very long game. I'm going to need a glass of water after this because it was a fairly long game and I was shouting a fair amount. So, once this is over, just Shalka appears to be just double checking, seeing what happened, why he lost, how he lost, where Cyber Nighty Pony attacked, and then at this point, likely to throw in the towel. Just going to speed this up a bit to the point where Shalka just says, GG. Isla says GG. There we go, there's GG. So that is game one to Cybernetic Pony. So we'll be back shortly with a match between, a uh, second match between Cybernetic Pony and Shalka. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Akron fans, to the second game of the Cybernetic Pony vs. Shalka tournament match for the Akron 2013 Christmas Tournament. We are going to be... Well, the first match we saw, which is on Tomb of Heroes, a very long match, very big back-and-forth match. Great harassment by Shalka, good economy construction by Cybernetic Pony, and ultimately Cybernetic Pony came out ahead. But it was still pretty tense. We're going to Game 2 this time in Cataclysm Ridge, a classic map that I'm sure all of you have seen, either as Cataclysm Ridge or as Hills. And we'll be starting now. So, Cybernetic Pony is going to be starting out... Sorry, Shalka starting out in the northeast corner of the map. Cybernetic Pony in the southwest corner of the map. And Cybernetic Pony going for CISO. And Shalka has been chosen to play Grekim because he plays random, so the game chooses for him. I'm really not sure exactly what Shalka's best species is. And honestly, the fact that he goes random, I'm not entirely sure why he does that. And in general, when it comes to competitive games, going random is a bad idea. Because... When you're playing a single species, you only have to deal with all the matchups for that species, or race, or faction, or whatever. You only have to deal with its matchups. You don't have to deal with what it has to fight, you have to deal with what it... All the little quirks that it has to deal with when fighting other species. Now, Akron metagame is not so developed that it's the biggest deal in the world to play random, but the fact is, you still have to go from memorizing three matchups to memorizing nine. Not six, as you might think common... Oh, actually, sorry, six matchups, come to think of it, sorry. Bad combinatorics there because it actually does matter. It doesn't really matter if it's a mirror match or not. So you have to memorize the three... Wait, hold on. No, I was right. Nine. It is nine. Yeah, you might think six because of combinatorics, because that's how many matchups there are, but that's because when you're thinking about it combinatorically, or in terms of combinations, you have to think about the fact that you're just counting the number of matchups. You're not counting the fact 
you're not counting both instances of those matchups. Like, you're not counting Grekin versus Iso and Iso versus Grekin. But when you're dealing with playing random, you have to think about that. You have to think about how you're approaching the matchup from both sides. In this case, Grekin versus Iso. And looks like Heavenly Pony is going for a fairly quick scouting attack with this, a spare Seppi and a Octo. The Octo is normal. The Seppi is actually kind of old. I haven't seen someone use a Seppi scout. I can't remember the last time I've seen someone use a Seppi scout, honestly. But yeah, anyway, the point is you have to memorize nine matchups. You have to practice nine matchups in order to be able to play well at random, compared to three for any dedicated species. Which is really hard to pull off. I mean, it's impressive if done, but really, once you get to the higher levels, once it gets really competitive, which I don't know if Akron is that competitive yet, but each of their species are quite idiosyncratic, so there's a lot to bear in mind, and it's just a lot easier to stick with one. Anyway... Digression aside, Shalka is clearly going for more of an economic focus. He's he was scouting a bit, sending out the octopod, and Cybernetic Pony on the other hand, jumping back to the very start of the game, looks like he is going for more of a rush strategy. Now I should point out, very quick armory is at least. Cataclysm Ridge is a bigger map than say Snowblind, but it's still not the biggest map. It has a decently long rush distance as a result of the way the paths are laid out. The ground rush distance you have to go kind of up and then around and then up again, or down and around and down, or you can go up and then all the way around and through the back door. So the rush distance is actually fairly long by ground, but it's not a terrible idea to go for an opening that's fairly aggressive anyway. Though admittedly against Grekin, the Octopod will tear it apart and take it out, and I don't see that being any different here, but then again, Cybernetic Pony is... Well, he is definitely a dedicated CISO player. However, Shalka does obviously know how to play Grekin well enough. He knows to go for the early Octopod. He knows to probably build up. I We will see. I'm really not sure what his best species is. I'm going to guess CISO, given the last game. But I'm kind of curious to know what he figures his, his best species is and what statistically his best species actually is. Because it's... I mean, the thing is, if you're playing random, like I said, there's nine matchups. You're going to be better at some than others. And... What matchups you're better at might have something to do with what species you're better at. I mean, especially when you consider the metagame is not so developed that matchups are so set in stone. It's probably going to be more down to what species you have better memorized or that you know the dynamics for a bit better than the other two. But, like I said, Shalka does have probably a very good grasp on what he can get away with in terms of a rush like this. Getting up the infantry he needs and... From here, not getting a whole lot of economy. He does have a proxy armory out here to the southeast, and that's going to be fairly powerful. Admittedly, the Octopod is in the way, and it's going to be hard, if not impossible, to get enough. I mean, it will be possible to get enough infantry to the Octopod, but the Octopod is very cost-effective getting rid of infantry. However, I should point out there actually is a third entrance to the main base. Along this ridge here and up the back, this entrance... Used to be infantry pathable. I'm pretty sure it's vehicle pathable now. It's still a fairly thin entrance, so it's hard for most vehicles to get, most large vehicles to get in. Small vehicles have no problem. Large vehicles do, and this armory is in a great spot to start building up infantry to send along that path into Shalka's base. It's a very little used path, because people don't often just attack from the south and attack straight up. But it is a path. It is a way in. And Cybernetic Pony may just end up using that. And a factory as well, and it looks like. No, Cybernetic Pony is rallying up to this. He appears to be likely intending to use that. Building up some defenses in his main base as well, and getting a comm center. Not in a good position for scouting, mind you. It's in a good position, I mean, it's a good position for defensive commands, or defensively getting Smart Idol and Ardo Hierarchy on. But, around here, or possibly... Now, around here, probably the best thing for scouting. Octopod and Octo are going into the main base, however, and they are going to try to get rid of these importers. Going for the RPs first. And a bunch of infantry are being built up. They are being set up. They are probably going to be hierarchied over to here eventually. Auto hierarchy is enabled, should point out. Or was enabled. Oh, there we go. Come up, not quite built yet. Cybernetic Pony had jumped back a bit from that moment, but auto hierarchy is auto enabled as soon as it's done, so these units will all get into a group, and then at this point it'd be with impunity getting into Shalka's base. Now Shalka, on the other hand, is his attack on the south is pretty strong. A nice flank from the north as well to try to distract the forces that will be defending. However, 
like I said, at this point, Cybernetic Pony is preparing a very powerful proxy attack, getting an ATHC as well. Luckily for him, this path is in fact vehicle pathable at this point. But that appears to be where he's planning on going. And Auto Hierarchy is doing its job for him too. And the Octobot is able to tear apart Cybernetic Pony's base with impunity. That's the thing. Cybernetic Pony is going to have to get rid of this. And Shalka does have an Octo here with Reef support. That Octo will actually heal up everything he's taken so far. And at the same time, this is the big thing. Cybernetic Pony has, he could rebuild if he needs to. And he has a ton of forces being built up here. If you attack, even you attack right now and actually tear everything apart here. But I don't imagine he'll do that immediately. I imagine he'll do that fairly soon, just not immediately. That being said, I think that Cybernetic Pony has this game in the bag. And it's... I mean, it'll, it'll be clear fairly shortly, but just given the position of these forces, it's all it'll take a Cybernetic Pony committing to the attack, and once that happens, which isn't anytime soon, probably in the next couple minutes or so, he actually doesn't have any bookmarks set in the timeline, so I'm not sure when he's planning on attacking, and when he thinks he has enough forces built up to do so. The auto is actually being used to build up a dome right next to this back door. Very interesting. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do an offensive dome in a very long time. Several months, really. Though usually you put it inside your opponent's base when you're doing that. And Shalka, from his point of view, has taken out Cybernetic Pony's main base. But like I said, Cybernetic Pony does not care. He really doesn't. He can just send the CTHC in and, and win from that point. And that's likely what he's planning on doing, as I've mentioned several times before. Just don't know when. Shalka, on the other hand, has no playable past bookmarks. I'm not sure what he's focused on at this exact point in time. Probably when he attacked and when you need to micro back some forces to get this Octo healed up, which appears to have been a futile effort, actually. The Reef is getting into a position to try to heal up the Octopod attacking. But at the same time, we see that... Oh, Cybernetic Pony is not quite ready to attack yet. He should be fairly soon, though. In fact, he's not even focusing on building up these forces. He's clearly focused more on microing his attack in his main base, getting his RPs out of the way, evacuating his base, and otherwise just keeping himself alive. And the Dome is floating in, so there we go. Now it's being offensive. It's calling Cybernetic Pony's mother offensive and hateful things and generally being a jerk to everyone around. Very, very offensive dome. I'd kill that dome if I was Cybernetic Pony, but really that's up to him. Maybe he has a thicker skin than I do. What he also has, however, is a wonderful positional advantage, and that will likely win him the game. He has actually quite a bit of infantry coming in as well, and given that the dome is flying, he could actually... Okay, he can't kill it now. It's on the ground now. But he could still kill it, and he does in fact kill that dome and take revenge for the mean things it said. As well as getting rid of the Octopod, which is pretty much permanent. I mean, Shalka might try to micro around this, but at this point, just so much firepower, micro is not going to help other than getting out of the way. Which basically means, one way or the other, that Cybernetic Pony has successfully defended his main base. And Shalka trying to do what he can to get the Octopod out of the way. No attack to the southeast yet. Now, Octopod kiting like this is actually really effective because the infantry have nowhere near the range of the Octopod. But even then, the Octopod just... Is it just able to survive? I think it's just barely able to survive. It is able to survive and escape. And the attack here has started, however. Cyberman Pony actually started the attack about 30 seconds ago. And 30 seconds ago, here we are. The attack coming in. Farapod is being built up. This is actually terrible timing because that Farapod is getting built up. The ATC can detect it, but... It's going to be much tougher than it would have been a few minutes ago. Actually, there's some special ops as well. In the no, there are no special ops, just the ATC for detection, but it actually didn't matter. That Farapod, what was I saying? What was I thinking? That Farapod is dead. Everything is dead. Shalka has lost this game very rapidly to this proxy assault. Very nice use of this entrance here. That's exactly what it's meant to do. Just offer that one little bit of opening just in case your opponent has blocked off the others. Although, admittedly, with Akron the way it is now, that may not be necessary. That being said... Cybernetic Pony has taken the game and the series. So well done to him. Shalka is about 20 seconds down from here, trying to escape with his RPs, but he has nothing to... Or he has... Actually, escaping with everything. His Arcticus will be a bit of a threat. Everything else is not too harmful. Still has the Spire up, though. He needs to get the Spire near the Arcticus, but the thing is that... Even then, he could still build up enough forces. He has, I mean, Cybernetic Pony could get more... He's getting a factory, he get more forces from there. Get rid of the Arcticus using that. I mean, even then, he actually has a special ops in place just to get rid of these forces, just to scout it out. So he knows what's going on, and he can just move in and take them all out. In fact, I'm a little bit surprised he isn't focused down on the Arcticus. He's focusing more on the RPs. 
Because if that Articus goes down, Cybernetic Pony is definitely the winner. Like, there's no way for Shalka to rebuild at this point other than the Articus. And I should point out, Cybernetic Pony has not lost any economy at this point. He actually only lost one importer, ultimately. So that was a really effective defense against that Octopod, and at this point, getting machinery, probably going to get Tornad from here, and then from there, finish off the Arceus. Like, very powerful attack there, very powerful use of the map. I am impressed. I really am. And Octopod actually in progen mode. Why is there Shalka's Octopod in progen mode? This is actually a bit of a difference. Shalka does actually have an Octopod. The one that defended earlier, apparently, went into progen mode and just to heal up, but not really able to defend too effectively, unfortunately. It has a defensive attack, but it's not that much. However, getting out of progen mode, taking a fair amount of damage from the ATC, and actually will die to the ATC. The ATC will pro No, it won't. The ATC is... No, the ATC will kill it as it tries to retreat. The Octopod is going to be able to take the damage. It, well, it's going to take the damage. It's going to be able to. It's going to have the opportunity to die. Frankly, dying is a poor choice, but... Apparently, that's all the Octopod has to choose from, because running away is clearly ineffective. But I did try to stand and fight, and that ATC is still able to get rid of it. The Arcticus going down to the massive infantry coming up to deal with it, and then that will be game. And Cybernetic Pony is about 20 seconds ahead from here. He does barely have vision of the Arcticus. He is able to get rid of it, and then once that happens, Shock will probably throw in the towel. And we'll be watching Kitan vs. Aragont, because that is the next series on the list. The last series, actually, for tonight. So once that's through, then that will be round two of the Acorn Christmas Tournament. So congratulations to Cybernetic Pony. Shalka still double-checking, making sure that he has some way out, but he does not. And Cybernetic Pony also seeing, basking in his victory over Shalka's base. So well done, and Shalka will be in the loser's bracket. We'll be going over the results of that once this game is officially terminated. But in the meantime, just watch as Cybernetti Pony re-kills everything. And Shaka throws in the towel. That is GG. That is game. And that is the series. So, we see that the win is for Oh, that was weird. The win is for Cybernetic Pony. He's going to be fighting the winner of Kitan vs. Aragon while Shaka fights J Raccoon to stay in the tournament. So, like I said, Kitan vs. Aragon is coming up next. Stay tuned, that will be starting shortly.